Today we're going on a short session to improve the local terminal experience. I've tried building it in logical layers where one step builds on top of the other. When it comes to choosing a terminal, there are a few famous choices. The first and probably the most popular is iTerm2. This is a modern terminal and a drop-in replacement for the modern Mac OS one, where you can configure themes, shortcuts, and many more. Alacrity is a minimalistic terminal, which allows for extensive configuration. It's written in Rust, which makes it fast and efficient. It supports almost every operating system. Because of its speed and file-based configuration, Alacrity is my daily driver. While on a slight different category, it's important to mention the popular Warp. Also written in Rust and provides a superior user interface with lots of cool features. Honestly, most of these features can be achieved with shell plugins we'll go over, but Warp definitely provides a pleasant visual experience. It's interesting to take a moment and go over the performance docs on the Warp Terminal website, where the comparison chart clearly shows how Alacrity is by far the most performant one of the bunch. Kitty is a GPU-based terminal, written in Python, runs on Linux and Mac OS, and has its own window management. Since I'm using my own multiplexer, I personally have no need for that. So let's see how I handle my window management using Tmux. Tmux operates in three layers, sessions, windows, and panes. I'm starting by creating a session. In my session, I have one window, currently named ZSH, and marked in blue. I'll rename it to show how I can set up a working environment for every situation, and create another window and rename that to Omer2. Let's create some panes. I can split my screen vertically or horizontally. I can change the pane size and move between them using the Tmux prefix and the arrows. Having different panes, I can fire up different processes in them. So I can watch them all run simultaneously and zoom in and out to focus on a specific one or move to another one and see what's up there in full screen. It's worth mentioning that all Tmux commands are being triggered with a prefix. By default, this is Control-B. I've mapped it to Control-A. I have Control set in the keyboard to where Caps Lock normally is, so Control and A are even easier to combine. I will now create a new pane, and using the prefix in A, Tmux sends me back and forth between the two. With the prefix and colon, we're given the command for Tmux, where we can put commands directly to the Tmux multiplexer. There are some hidden easter eggs in Tmux, like showing the time. But a far more interesting one is the menu of all sessions, windows, and panes. This allows you to scroll through them, pick one, and attach right into it. With Detach, we can live Tmux. It'll keep running in the background. LS will show the active sessions, and Attach, provided a target, will attach the shell back to the desired location. Another very useful feature is the ability to scroll up using the keyboard. You can search the text using Vim's motions and even visually mark blocks, copying them and pasting them back. Reading from the docs, Oh My ZSH is a delightful open source community driven framework for managing your ZSH configurations. This is where the cool part begins. Oh My ZSH has hundreds of plugins and themes. It'll take your shell to the absolute next level. With over 150,000 stars on GitHub, it's one of the most popular open source community projects. Here you can see the modest number of plugins I use to not overload the system. I use Git, History Search, KubeCTL, Auto Suggestions, AWS, and Z. The next important part about the shell is its VI mode. The default is text or insert mode as you know it from Vim, but when it changes, I know I'm in normal mode where I can use Vim motions to move across the text and edit it. Here I'm using B to jump through words backwards, and then W for word motion forward. I can also use F to find characters, just like in Vim. Last but not least, I can cut words and paste them back wherever I want. Next up, we take a look at power level. Power level is a ZSH theme, and that's what's responsible for my shell line. 
Mine's pretty lean, but it can be extended to show every bit of information on your machine, including Wi-Fi speed and even status of Spotify Play Bar. See the list of available plugins. I started with what made sense at the time and slowly cleaned the rest. The nice thing about many of these plugins here is that they only spring into action only on a specific trigger. Let's see the AWS plugin in action. Now when I start typing AWS, as in triggering the AWS CLI plugin, PowerLevel shows the profile I'm working with. Changing to one of my company's profiles lets the plugin add that bit of information to my shell as well. Another example is Kubernetes. Having a cluster config in place reads its name when I start typing kubectls or one of its aliases. Now let's talk a little bit about file navigation. In my eyes, the quickest, most sensible way to navigate the system is to use a fuzzy finder like FZF. FZF deserves a special focus. This is a general purpose fuzzy finder. Let's integrate FZF with find to show how easy it is to navigate through files and directories. If we pipe it to FZF, it becomes a fuzzy search utility. I can then pipe it to any kind of helper. One good example is pbcopy that will make sure the result is stored in my clipboard. So I can then paste it to wherever I want. Now let's tweak find to ignore hidden dot files and pipe it again. The idea of having a fuzzy finder is the ability to search text and filter the results as you progress. Let's assume I want to find a file and edit it. I can wrap the last command and send it to NeoVim for editing. Note that these wouldn't normally be lines I type, but functions I store in ZSHRC as shortcuts and aliases. Now let's attach into Tmux and show a quick integration where FZF automatically opens in a new pane. Another cool feature of FZF is the ability to show a file preview. If we combine it with a tool that shows syntax highlighting, something like BAT, which we'll touch on later on in this video, FZF can also serve as a minimal file browser. Z is a jump around tool. Once installed, it starts tracking visited paths in the system and indexes them based on frequency of visits. Then, based on the data it has, it can help you get where you want by assuming the most probable path. What you see is a list of paths I visited recently and their frequency score. If I want to go to my downloads folder, all I have to do is set downloads, then sends me directly to where it assumes I want to go. Next up in navigation, Ranger. Ranger is a Vim-inspired file manager for the console. Using Vim motions, you can browse the system, roll up and down directory trees, and the best part is the preview pane, where you get syntax highlighted preview of a file. Exa is a modern replacement to LS. I've mapped LS on my machine to serve through Exa with icons, permissions, and file skid status, and added an option to view a tree using LT. Another improvement to the CD slash LS experience is combining them into one. CX on my machine triggers a CD and then EXA output in one command. This makes traversing the system a breeze when you don't use a browser like Ranger. Let's quickly take a look at how I configure it. Another drop-in replacement that's worth mentioning is XH for curl. While curl, or CURL, is not part of a terminal basic experience per se, it serves here as an example to one of many options that improve day-to-day -day work. Just like EXA, it improves the flow with colors, simpler command syntax, and better user experience overall. I mapped it to HTTP for simplicity, but you can do your thing. Lastly, another similar example is BAT. Improving CAT, BAT replaces CAT providing syntax highlighted text, line numbers, and even has an optional Git integration. It also serves as a little helper by changing the output on demand. RipRep is an incredibly fast recursive text search tool that searches a directory for a regex pattern. Another popular option is AG, or the Silver Searcher, which is just as fast. 
My last tip is not about a tool, but rather a method of work, specifically with shortcuts, which in the terminal are known as aliases. You can see I have aliases for pretty much every command I need to run daily, whether that's Kubernetes, Git, Docker, Terraform, anything that's frequently repeated is set as an alias. That's it. Thank you for watching. Use the tools above, but make it your own. Keep it clean, easy to work with, and you'll never think of using the UI again.